when God created the world, he created the world with love on his, on his heart, on his mind, and he created us for relationship, to be in relationship with him. And then he created mm-hmm. Adam, of course, and he looked at Adam and he looked at the garden and everything that he created, he was pleased with. However, the first time we read, and I've shared this many times, of, of God maybe not being so pleased is when he looked at Adam and he saw that Adam was alone. So therefore, he created Eve as a companion for Adam, for it's not right for us to be alone. So we were made for relationship. But as we know, sometimes relationships can be quite tricky. So I've encouraged you over the last couple of weeks to begin a new journal because we really have this opportunity during the season series to do 40 days of love, not just the six sessions that you'll get from me, but 40 days of love. If you so choose to take this personally and go deeper with God and really allow him to speak into your heart and into those relationships um, in your life. And I've encouraged you to write down some of those key relationships in your life. And we've committed to praying for those people every day in particular the ones that perhaps are a wee bit tricky right now or perhaps the ones that you may need more patience in. and we looked at patience last week so it's not just a blanket prayer over all our relationships help me lord in all my relationships we're really going deep with god personally in our personal relationship we're bringing those people before god we're bringing those situations that may be wonderful relationships where you have no issues but you're, e- you're either just spending time just immersing yourself in prayer giving thanks for those people or you're asking god to help to lead you and guide you um, through those relationships in order to make those relationships healthier and stronger so what i'd want you to do just now is you don't need to look at your list but if you have it in front of you then great. But I want you to think of those people on your list or in your life. And I wonder, as you look at your list, is there anyone on that list that you have had conflict with in the past? So as you look at your list, you might be sitting beside that person right now. Is there someone on that list where you've come into conflict with them at one time or another? Or maybe there's someone on your list right now that you've recently had some heated exchanges with. Now, nobody likes conflict, do they really? No one wants those uncomfortable um, conversations or silences. However, it is impossible sometimes to move through this life without having any conflict. Now, as I said, it's not nice. We don't like it. However, ask yourself, how often do you find yourself in conflict situations. When it comes to conflict, are you more like the turtle or are you more like the skunk? The turtle retreats and hides inside its shell and doesn't want to come out, doesn't want to engage with others. Or are you like the skunk and she lets everyone know that she's there and she doesn't care about the damage that she leaves behind? I wonder which one are you? So, of course, conflict isn't nice. No one likes it. And as Christians, we have this desire to have peace, don't we? Have peace at all times. God grants us and and blesses us that peace. We also desire peace-filled relationships. I'm almost certain I can speak for all of you tonight that you want peace-filled relationships with everyone that is on that relationship list. However, There is this misunderstanding sometimes with that term, keeping the peace, that that we believe that that phrase means no confrontation at all, that, that we are basically to be like the turtle. However, at times there are consequences to that. For you see, sometimes we have to speak up. There are times where we have to speak the truth and not retreat away. For instance, if we continue to keep our mouths closed to a subject that perhaps needs attention, that can quite often lead to further problems in our relationships. So tonight I want us to take a look into 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again, which is our key text for this whole series. And tonight we're looking at verse 6. And we'll see from our first slide this evening that verse 6 tells us all about love once again. So what is love? 
Well, verse 6 says that love rejoices in the truth. Love rejoices in the truth. Yes, of course, we want to be at peace in our relationships. Of course, we want to keep the peace. However, often holding back the truth, avoiding the truth, that's actually not going to make for healthy relationships. For instance, a couple in a marriage who maybe are having some problems, maybe there's some problems bubbling under the surface. Maybe they were hurt with each other or were angry about something. Now, perhaps they're Christians and they're thinking, well, I don't want to cause an argument. I don't want to be the one to bring it up first. I don't want to bring the subject up and then end up having slammed doors or the children hearing discontent. Or I think I'll just remain silent about it. And what we're actually doing is we're sweeping it under the carpet. We're not facing the truth. And the more we sweep it under the carpet, what we'll end up doing is having a mountain on, on top underneath our rug that cannot be avoided. So there are times where we need to speak the truth in love in order to make for healthy, peace-filled relationships. Slide two, we have two verses that speak about this. Beautifully, Proverbs 10, verse 10 says, someone who holds back the truth causes trouble, but one who openly confronts works for peace. So someone that openly confronts a situation that needs addressed is actually someone that is making way for peace. So keeping the peace is not always staying silent. Ephesians 4 verse 15 says, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ Jesus. So openly confronting, speaking truth in love, that's what we're looking at tonight. And our text is saying that that is actually what's going to make way for more loving relationships. It's not always right to stay silent. In fact, we've seen a lot of this recently in the news where people are coming out in protest. The Black Lives Matters. And it's all because people have thought, well, well, we can't say this, we can't address that, we'll just remain silent as if that's keeping the peace. But actually what it has done is just repress many, many years of hurts and pains. These issues need to be addressed and they have to be talked about. And that's what we're looking at tonight. We're looking at tonight speaking truth in love. Now, we need to be honest about why we need to speak the truth in love. And there's a couple of points that I want to bring to us tonight. To speak truth, truth in love is not an opportunity to seek revenge. Okay, it's not an opportunity just to get back at someone. We have to look at this cautiously. So number one is, and we've got slide number three, is we need to check our intentions. First of all, are we speaking truth in love because we want to make way for a healthier relationship? Are we speaking truth in love because we want to encourage that other person? Are we speaking truth in love because we're trying to protect them or save them? 2 Corinthians 12 verse 19 says, We tell you this as Christ's servants and with God as our witness. Everything we do, dear friends, is to strengthen you. It's to strengthen the other person. If your friend was about to step out in front of a moving vehicle, you would warn them, wouldn't they? Well, if a close friend was about to step into trouble or make some harmful decision in their life, our job as their friend, as their loved one, is to come alongside them and speak truth in love. Now, there are times with teenage children in particular where we maybe want to avoid certain conversations because we don't want to appear like the baddie like the bad mum who's 
always nagging. But if we just continue to sweep these issues under the table, then we're not saving our children from harm. We're not having these open conversations that are actually going to make way for a healthier conversation between ourselves and our children. That's just one example of that. So number two, so number one, we need to check our intentions. So if we're going to speak truth and love, where's it coming from? If it's to help that other person, if it's to make way for a more peaceful, strengthened relationship between you and that other person, maybe it's you and your best friend, you and your husband, you and your child or neighbor, then yes, go forward and speak truth and love. Number two, we need to plan our words. Play. How do we do that? How can we plan our words carefully? Well, pray, pray, and pray some more. When we spend time with God and his presence, bringing that relationship before the throne of God, the Lord will give us the right words to speak. And that's in all sorts of situations. So for instance, if you're ministering into a situation and you're looking for the right words to speak, pray, pray, and pray again that the Lord would grant you the words to speak. If you're evangelizing to someone right now and you're not sure of what words to speak, pray, pray and pray some more and ask the Lord to give you the right words to speak. But when we cover our relationships in prayer and we're considering speaking truth in love, it is incredibly important that we plan what it is we want to say and how we want to say it. Proverbs 16 Verse 23, hopefully we have it, I think we've got that, a slide for that. It says, intelligent people think before they speak. What they say is then more persuasive. And then it says, kind words are like honey, sweet to the taste and good for the health. So all you honeybees will love that one. When we're speaking truth in love, make sure we are speaking words that are kind and sweet as honey. So let's, number one, when we're speaking truth and love into these relationships, let us check our motives. Let us give our hearts a little heart check. Then we need to plan our words carefully so that we're using God's words and not words of retaliation or words of revenge or words of hurt that the words that we're speaking are going to bring life and they're going to bring peace. Number three, if you're taking notes, we need to choose the right moment. And Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And if that's the case, then there is a right moment for you and that other person to have this conversation where you can speak truth and love into that situation. It's really important that we choose our moments. What I've learned from this one is don't go at my husband the minute he walks through the door from his work, okay? That one has failed over the years many times where maybe all day I've been holding on to something that I just need to get off my chest and the poor man hasn't even put his coat on the, on the coat hook and his bag down on the floor and I'm saying, well, I need to speak to you about this. That's not the right time. Number one, he's probably tired. Number two, he's definitely hungry. And number three, he's transitioning from garden head to home family head and it's not the right time. And on many occasions, we've end up, ended up having a conflict situation because I didn't choose my moment wisely. So we need to choose our moments wisely. Same for teenagers. Here's another one that I've learned recently. Speaking to teenagers first thing in the morning. You know, I've maybe been up from seven praying for hours. Well, you know how it goes. You're up early, you're doing the washing, you maybe do your devotional, you have your quiet cup of coffee. They wake up at nine o'clock, you've been up for hours and you think, right, I'm going to address this with Madeline. But Madeline's just out of bed. And I've learned from experience that that's not the right moment to choose to speak truth in love. 
about Madeline when she's nodding, picking up her dirty laundry off the floor or whatever. So we need to check our motives. We need to plan our words carefully and we need to choose the right moment. Another thing that really struck me recently was a situation that I had with Gabriella. Gabriella and I just kept coming at each other and we were rubbing each other up the wrong way. And I decided, right, I must be choosing the wrong time to address these situations or I must be using the wrong words. And I started to pray about it. And I eventually had a conversation with Gabriella and she said to me, Mum, it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. And it's how often you're saying it. And she explained to me that I only needed to say it once. And if I was going over and over and over again, it, all she was hearing was me nagging, 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 nagging. And all I was seeing was disrespect, disrespect, disobedience. So we decided that we were going to change the way that we approached the situation. And things have improved because we're choosing our words carefully and we're choosing the right moment. So check your intentions. If we're going to speak truth and love, which is all about love, we need to check our intentions. We need to choose our words carefully, speak words of encouragement and affirmation, lift that other person up. Is it edifying? Is it encouraging? These are questions we can be asking ourselves. And number three, choose the right moment. Number four, and we've spoke about it already in slide six, tells us to speak encouragement. Look at what verse 25 says there. A word of encouragement does wonders. You know, it's so lovely to hear these stories about you spreading love just now. I'm loving hearing all the text messages and, and testimonies that you're sharing as a result of this study. It really is bringing joy to my heart to know that women to women are out there just being contagious about love and spreading the love. But look at that, an, encourage, an encouragement, a, an encouraging word does wonders and it's lovely if you can afford to buy flowers or a gift and that's great and it's beautiful and we've heard from Alison tonight how lovely that is and we've heard from Razzie earlier on this evening about receiving that laptop for the children that's wonderful these are great acts of love and kindness but actually an encouraging word goes just as far so a text that just sends to somebody saying, do you know what, I'm praying for you today. Do you know what, you really inspire me. Or do you know what, you're just a, a real woman of God and I just love the way you raise your children or I just love the way that you love Jesus or just really supporting each other in our, in, in our daily walk. You know, we're in marriages in particular. And don't get me wrong, this study is not about marriage. Not everybody that is on this chat tonight is, is married and um, however you can apply all of this to all of our relationships but in particular in a marriage and um, we're so quick at times to tell our spouses what they're doing wrong oh you should have done this or could you not wash the dishes that way or could you not load the dishwasher that way and it, it could that could be conversations you're having with your teenagers as well you don't buy me flowers or you don't do this when quite often we don't spend enough time actually sharing with them these words of encouragement that, that do wonders of the things that they do do that is helpful and encouraging. Because actually, if we speak words of encouragement, who knows what wonders that's actually going to do for a marriage, for a friendship, for a relationship with our children. So let's start telling each other the things that we do do for each other that is helpful, that is kind, that is encouraging, as well as being able to have these conversations ab about being truth in love in order to help some of the things that, that aren't going so well in relationships. So we talked about the fact that it needs to be an appropriate time. And we've talked about the fact that we need to use the right words and it's really important that when we are looking at our relationship list right now, that we spend time praying and seeking God's help and being able to do this in our relationships. Now, just a word of caution, just because we've studied this tonight, I don't want everyone clicking off tonight and then picking up the phone and phoning these people on your relationship list. I really want you 
to spend time on this. It may be tonight that some of you have been avoiding conversations with a, a, a good friend. Maybe you're worried that you'll lose the friendship. So you've held back and, and you've thought, right, I'm not going to actually share that with her because I don't want to lose her as a friend. But actually, your heart's become hard and the more you speak to him or her, you, you know, there's more, there's bitterness seeping in there. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. But please go away and pray about this and seek the Holy Spirit's leadership and guidance because he will give you the right opportunity and he will create a moment which will be the right moment. However, number four, slide seven, talks about the fact that if you are going to speak truth in love, you need to be aware that you may need to risk rejection. And that's one of the reasons why so many of us perhaps act like the turtle sometimes, because we're afraid. We're afraid that we'll be rejected. Well, if we're afraid that, that that person will fall out with us, we're afraid that we'll maybe get the silent treatment, we're afraid that we'll maybe get doors slammed, or it will result in an argument, or, or it will result in that relationship being completely severed. So we avoid it. We skirt round the issues. We sweep it under the carpet like we spoke about at the beginning. However, we need to trust God in this. If God is leading you, to make way for a more peace-filled relationship. He will make way for an opportunity for you to be able to speak truth in love. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I know I distressed you greatly with my letter. Well, there you go. Straight away we know um, how difficult that's obviously been, that communication. But it goes on to say, although I felt awful at the time, I don't feel at all bad now that I see how it turned out. The letter upset you, but only for a while. Now, I'm glad not that you are upset, but that you are jarred into turning things around. You let the distress bring you to God, not drive you from him. The result was all gain, not loss. Now, that's quite an incredible passage there about actually speaking the truth and loving it. First, it might have appeared that the other person didn't take that too well but actually it was for the greater good. So when we do speak truth in love, we are risking rejection. But here's the thing, that person may not have spent as much time as you praying over that situation or seeking the right moment. They may need some time. They may need to pull back from you for a little while as they allow this truth just to settle in their heart. They may need time to go away and pray themselves. But if you have entrusted that relationship to God, that conversation to God, if you've sought his moment and he's given you the words to speak, you have to trust that the outcome is also in his hands. And he is working for the good of those who love him. And the Bible says that if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. God's truth will set you free and will set that relationship free so that that relationship can be more peace-filled. So keeping the peace, remaining silent is and moving into your shell because you are out of fear, of fear of rejection, fear of confrontation, fear of raised voices, not always is the right way to go. Sometimes we need to speak the truth in love. So if we'll put the last slide up, Corrie. We're looking tonight at what is love. Well, we've learned so far in this series that love is our highest priority. It's our, it's our highest goal in life. Nothing else matters. Nothing we say, nothing we do, nothing we achieve or give matters without love. We've also learned so far from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verses 1 to 4 that love is patient and love is kind. And we've been looking to the Holy Spirit to help us to be more patient and kind in our relationships. We've also been asking God to lead us and direct us in acts of kindness and to how to be a good Samaritan. Tonight, God is saying love is re rejoices in the truth. And he's calling us to speak the truth in love. 
but he will give us the right words to speak and the right opportunities. But first, we need to check our motives. We need to choose our words carefully, and that involves praying over all of this. Number three, we need to plan the right moment. Choose the right time for all parties, not just for you, but for everybody. It may be worthwhile checking and asking yourself, is this the right time for that other person? You know, are they likely to be tired or are they going to be alert at this time? Are they, like, are they hungry? Are, you know, is this a convenient time for them? It may be worth actually when you come to the place where you think, right, I need to have this conversation, actually giving them a time and saying, you know, if it's not someone within your home or even if it is, you could say, could we sit down tonight at eight o'clock um, when the kids are settled or when we've had our tea or if, you, if it's a friend, you could make an appointment. You could say, look, is it possible that we could get together over Zoom or over the phone or go for a walk in the park on such and such a day at such and such a time? And actually, it's a time and a moment that fits both parties. Always speak words of encouragement. Tell that person how much they mean to you. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them the reason why you're having the conversation is because you love them. You know, if it's your child, if it's your best friend, if it's your husband, you know, have that conversation. I'm not happy having this conversation. It's uncomfortable, but I'm aware that I, I want this relationship to be the best relationship it can be. I love you with all of my heart and that's actually the reason why I'm having this conversation because I do love you. Um, and look for ways to make way for peace in your relationship. So let's go back to your list. As you look at your list tonight or as you ponder the relationships that are in your life, only you know if there are any relationships in your life that perhaps You've been avoiding certain conversations, sweeping things under the mat, allowing resentment, maybe bitterness to set in. Then perhaps it's time for an honest conversation. But before you do that, make sure you go through all the points tonight. And when you're led by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you forward into healthier, stronger relationships. So tonight's session might not be for everybody, but there may be someone tonight listening in that really needed to hear that it's time to speak the truth in love. So that brings us to the end of session three of 40 Days of Love. Um, your challenge for the week ahead is to pray over that those relationships once again, perhaps compare what we've looked at tonight in the verses of scripture with the individual relationships. If there is a particular relationship that you're thinking, do you know what, it's time to have that conversation, then please apply all the different points that we've looked at tonight. If you need somebody to talk to first about it, now this is not out of nosiness, um, this is just the job that I do, and if you want me to maybe draw alongside you and pray with you over that relationship and for that relationship before you go forward to have a conversation, then I'm available this week just send me a text and I can have a chat with you over the phone. I've been quite encouraged by um, how this study is impacting people on a personal level. And I really believed that before the study began that, that this study was going to do so. So I, I need you all to know that I'm here for you. If you want to talk any of this through privately and confidentially before you make any steps in improving um, your relationships. But also your challenge this week is to write something for someone. Now, it can be a text message, it can be an email, it can be a card, but bearing in, taking into consideration those lovely verses that we read earlier about a word of encouragement does wonders, and the verse about kind words are like honey, sweet to the taste and good for the health. So I want you to write something to somebody, words that are like honey, that are so sweet, and words that are just going to bring a great encouragement to someone. Get yourself some second class stamps, or if you want to go for a walk and just post it through the door, and see how far we can spread these wonderful words of encouragement.
this week. And then next Thursday, when we come back for session four, maybe someone else like Jacqueline did this evening will have a lovely testimony to be able to share. So that brings us to the end of session three. So before we, we have a time of prayer, I just really want to open it up to, to you guys. We've still got time if you want to share something. If there was